like thousands of others across the country. It's the place to go if you want to be seen, and to a lot of folks, it's the information center of the neighborhood. Give everybody the strength and ability to do what they do best, and that's make people laugh. Everybody want to be famous! Nobody want to put the work in! Our job is to spark somebody else watching us. We, we might not be ones, but let's not be selfish. Ooh. All right, man. Hey, 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 hey. Before we even get started, man, you know, I don't know if y'all know this. Uh, well, if you're watching, you've noticed. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> if your ears work, <laughs> you've heard, all right? Our girl Kells, man. She's just been working, all right? She hasn't been fired. Super busy. She hasn't been terminated. She hasn't been suspended. She do a million things. She wouldn't give a fuck if she was, though. Yeah, man. So let me let me go ahead and get Kel some love, man. She might need it right now. Hello. You are that. I quite literally am all of that. I'm crazy. I'm brilliant. I'm anointed. I'm surviving. I'm strong. I'm weak. I'm smart. I do dumb stuff. I'm literally all of that. Turn to your name and say, you all of that. You yeah, you Kels, all of that. Oh, Kels is a little bipolar. You all of that. I try to tell you all that, but she ain't here. Oh, what's up, Kels? You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Cut out. Listen here. Where do where do we start, don't man? Fuck all that, bro. What, what made we... you make the statement you made off camera, brother? I, I'm not gonna tell the world the numbers, but my man to my right, yes, my immediate right, because there's no middle this time. My immediate right has vowed, taking the oath with himself, to get himself in better shape because health is wealth. What bought this decision on, Joe? Well, here's the thing, man. You know, you, when you when you have conversations, man, you're drunk. No, no, no. This is a very sober conversation. Okay. You know, when you when you have real conversations, you have to be real with yourself, man. And I like to hold people accountable. So I need to start holding myself accountable in different areas of my life. And this is one of them. <laughs> the stomach area. Yeah, man. You know, I, I'm, I, I look too good, man. I'm on camera every other week. Talk your shit then, bro. You know what I mean, every week, you know, and I still look good when I carry it, man, but I can always be better, man. <laughs> you know, and, and and I don't, right now, I'm not carrying the body of a former athlete, man, who put up numbers, who's killed a lot of UPGs and, and, and guards um, in this city and, and beyond, to be honest with you. you well, know, second, I, man, when you say it, because you, you've been through this shit, bro. I, I want to call you lazy now. Fair enough. I want to call you complacent. True. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 First of all, I, I don't want to call you incompetent because you, you know better. You got the wherewithal to, to know what you should look like, what you want to look like, and where you should have been at our age, at our ripe young age, and them young, the mid 40s. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not giving you no grace, bro. Fuck you. You should have been did this. All right. You done? Yeah. I feel I feel like you just scolded me. I don't really like your tone. Yeah, fam. Okay. And fix your face. You said hold your people accountable. For sure. I, 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 I respect go, bro. it. I respect it. <laughs> um, but that's not, that's not, I didn't want it to be received that way, man. I was hoping, you know, I was. <laughs> Some sympathy? Yeah, just something different. Yeah. You know, just something different. Not sympathy. I think women need sympathy. Uh, I think men probably may, maybe more Damn, empathetic. Men don't need sympathy, bro. <sighs> yeah. Pending situation. You want to start off with that pending, shit? Pending situation. We might need just as much sympathy, if not more. You know? Uh, let's see here. Did we yeah. miss anything this week? Anything that was worth getting into? Because it's very important that we debate, we hate, and we skate because this podcast it's for Chicago, by Chicago. And again, we like to highlight our tastemakers, our movers, our shakers, our influencers. We like to start in Chicago and work our way out. And before we get to some of these big things that are happening within Whoa. our own city, that was nasty. I got to relax. <laughs> um, do you have you, you have anything that you want to address, speak on? Um, if I did, I forgot. But I just, you know, uh, funny thing just happened. Not funny at all. So don't take it as in a humorous kind of way. But I've been gone from church for a long time, bro. For a long time. I, mean, I, I ain't even never looked back, you know. Love my last pastor. I still call him my pastor, Pastor Ray Berry Hill, you know. I left church today. Today was the home going service for his wife, uh, Pastor Adrian Berry Hill, for our bro, Micah, uh, Jeremy, Ray Jr., uh, a heavily one to uh, Wesley, sent their mom home today, you know. And it was, it was a good service, man. My mom was speaking in the service. Nice. Once I saw her name, I said, oh, she ain't never going to be quiet, fam. I'm finna leave now. Why I got it? Why I say Mark safe from Sheila Thompson? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Sheila. But yeah, the Lord, the Lord, he works in mysterious ways, bro. What's going on, man? I'm in the pews, you know, mourning. In the know, pews. In the pews, lending empathy and sympathy. Empathy and sympathy. So, you know, to the uh, resurrection, new life resurrection church and, and my brothers that go down his hand, all wow. the saints and sinners, goddamn. I'm lending mm -hmm. sympathy. And, you know, I've been gone. I think the Lord trying to bring me back. Wow. Trying to bring me back to church, man, because in that service, it was yams. Yams? I tried to focus. Yams, yams, bro. It's by the abundance. Yams on a Saturday. On a Saturday, bro. Not Sunday dinner. 
Saturday yams. Is that is that you know is Saturday the Sabbath or is the Sabbath Sunday? Saturday is Jam Day. Yam Day. It's Jam Day, man. I'm looking like, bro, get your shit together. You are in the Lord's house. Act, act accordingly. The Lord's house, man. Behave and this is a home going. But my my bro, I can't say that it was fucked up. My nigga. When I tell you it was caked up in there, it was caked up in there. Hmm. I left early for a reason. Hmm. I said, I'm almost went up there and got baptized at the wrong, the wrong service. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shit, let me, let me leave, man. I had to bounce, man. But no, in all serious, though, man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, shout out to the fam. No, for sure, man. I, 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 I thought I'd <laughs> be here earlier this week, man. We had a great conversation, man. So condolences to you and the family, brother. Absolutely. Well, let's start here, man. Yams. Let's Yams. start here. Yams. Um, Yams. In the world of the NBA, we had a great from Chicago announce that he was retiring. Uh, brother Derek Rose. Absolutely. Uh, Top tier point guard. Mm-mm. One of a, one of a kind. Probably the fastest with a ball line to line in the end. Could be, could be, bro. You know, uh, and he had a power game for a, a guard his size, a power game and bounce. I would give him the most athletic point guard that we have seen present day. Oh, that's tough because you got you got Russ out there too, bro. Russ is a premier athlete. At He's not as athletic as as D Rose. I ain't gonna argue. I'm not here to argue that, bro. I'm not here to argue that. I do know that. Derrick Rose, had he stayed healthy? And everybody knows I'm a, I'm a Lord Isaiah Thomas fan to the core. I think he's the best player to ever come out of Chicago. Sorry, Mark. You know, I say what I say, bro. I say what I said. Uh, Isaiah got two of them. He led him to the championship. He won on every fucking level. Uh, but if Derrick had stayed healthy, he would have been the best player to ever come out of Chicago. Sorry, Tim. Sorry, Terry. Sorry, uh, Eddie. No, we're not going to be sorry. sorry but no, because we got some we got some yeah. dogs in the city, bro. Terry know what's up. You know what I'm saying? We we got, he we know what time it is. got dogs in the city, bro. But that man was, his fast twitch was just faster twitching than everybody else's, bro. It, it was different. It was different. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, with his retirement, it sparked a debate. And I, I'm here for the conversation. Is he Hall of Fame? Yes or no? Just one answer, please. No. Why can't I explain though? I'm, 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 I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there, right? <laughs> because because so, so like it started with is he Hall of Fame, right? And everybody wants to give his stats, right? Um, and then you know people want to talk about the injury, right? So you've had a, a bunch of great p- players such as Penny Hardaway, great career, got hurt, you know, what I mean, probably derailed his Hall of Fame eligibility, right? Um, but when you talk about D Rose, same issue, injury. Had a great five seasons. After that, you know, you kind of bounced around the league. Um, I believe he only averaged, I think, career rise 17 a game. 17, right? right? Um, not sure what his total career points are, but About 12, I'm going, 12 or something. So you say no, I say yes. So we're on different ends of the spectrum. Why you say yes, though? I say yes because A, MVP of the league, youngest MVP of the league. Yawn. Three. Three time All Star, okay. But even more importantly, it won more than that. No, three times. But even more importantly, here's all, all NBA too, though. All NBA, yeah, he, right? All, yeah, yeah. Beyond all that, all those stats, everybody can can go Google that. The most important reason why he deserves a first ballot Hall of Fame, first ballot, first ballot. This nigga tripping. 2012 All Star Game. While LeBron and 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 uh, Dwight Howard is out there juking and dancing to Meek Mill, mm-hmm. he stood on business like he wasn't there to play with nobody and looked at them like, "Get y'all goof ass out of here! I'm from Chicago." Slewed the crowd and kept it moving. That move alone let me know that he was different. He is, he's not with the games. He's not with the buddy buddy. His circle is tight. I love that. So with that move alone, <laughs> to not buddy crazy. buddy up with the king of the league, Superman. And and D Rose, that's a crazy combination. He like, nah, I ain't playing with y'all, fam. Y'all go ahead. He didn't make that. Oh, you know what? Go yeah, ahead. go ahead, go ahead and cook. No, go no, no, cook. no. I'm, that's just a moment. See, people don't remember that moment. I do. And we're talking about a brother from the South Side of Chicago who definitely is in pictures throwing up GD. What up, gang, gang? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And footworking. So hey, he, man. he's yeah. capable of all these things. He's so he's so Chicago. He's too shy. Exactly. He's so, too shy. So so everybody that's on that board, let him in for that moment, 2012. Yeah. What you got? Tell tell me why. Tell me why not. You bring up, I don't give a fuck why he ain't. He just not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh he just not. Can't, but the numbers don't add up, you know. And if they want to go total basketball career, I see if he had if he had a longer basketball career, but he was one and done in Memphis, bro. Like if he because he was a dog in Memphis. 
He got the high school accolades, you know, uh, so you can't really take that from him. But fuck, you bought the year 2012, the All-Star game, while Brian was dancing, Derrick Rose wasn't dancing. I'm bringing up 2012 for a different reason. Because in April, on April 28th, 2012, the basketball guy shined on me by not shining on him. And it's going to sound fucked up when I say it. It's going to sound fucked up when I say it. But that day, <clears throat> Chicago fans understood that they was not worthy to have no motherfucking homegrown product to celebrate because you arrogant, entitled, cocky motherfuckers hold on to shit that ain't y'all's. Michael Jordan's not y'all's. He wasn't born here. He wasn't raised here. He came in for 12 seasons play and y'all hold on to that nigga like he, he saved the world, like he stopped global warming, like he stopped domestic abuse against women, like he stopped the, the infiltration of drugs from uh, the government and black neighbors. Y'all hold on to him like, like nothing fucking else, man. Look here. The Cubs was losing for 100 something years. Y'all kept talking about the Cubs, the Cubs, the Cubs. The Sox was trash. How you got two baseball teams and y'all can't support both of them? Y'all don't deserve nothing good in Chicago. The Bears, that racist ass organization, they don't do right, but y'all still support them. You Chicago fans is trash, but on April 28th, I was in a barber shop getting my haircut, me and my son. I'm arguing, it's like a 20v1 in that bad boy. I'm arguing my barber, the next barber, the next booth over, every customer in there. It got heated to the point where a mom wanted to fight me over, over a game that he don't play and I don't play no more. Over a team. Dog, I get my haircut, it get, get, get a little grimy now, get a little hectic now. I say, if it's gonna happen, my son ain't gonna be here. I'm gonna take my son home. I'll be right back. Nigga, I'm on business. I'm, I'm be right back in this motherfucker. I leave. I'm on the radio. Now, mind you, the Bulls is blowing out the 76ers. The Bulls are blowing the 76ers clean off the motherfucking floor. The Sixers start coming back. Bulls panicked. I had left the barbershop. There's no reason for me to watch the game anymore. I had left the barbershop, bro. I get to about, man, I'm on Central Lake in Zombie Land. Central Lake in my haircut, you know what I'm saying? I hit Augusta, I hit Augusta in uh, Central for the bus that motherfucking right. The radio stopped. I don't know if it's Leon or not, bro. The radio stopped. It said, breaking news. Derrick Rose had just hurt himself in the fourth quarter of the Bulls game. I say, skirt on the brakes. Reverse U-turn. Damn back to the barbershop. I had just bet these moms 50 bucks that if Miami meet the Bulls in the playoffs, Miami gonna wax that ass. You know why? Because they got the one guy, LeBron James. No shade to Derrick Rose. I ain't make fun of his injury. But you know what? When you motherfuckers want to act entitled and dumb and stupid and, and overlook everything in the signs that logic say you should look at and know why, after Derrick Rose, what you have? Joe Kim, nobody. Lou Al Dingalang, motherfucking. Name these players they have on these tape. You had nobody behind Derrick. He, that's why the motherfuckers stay hurt all the time. He carried all you fucking bombs. And y'all start supporting Joe Kim Noah, who, who, who tied his hair up so fast that he's gonna get blowjobs. Hey, that shit blew me on the free throw line, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that shit, bro. Get, get, the, get out of here. Y'all believed in that, bro. Let me know how much you guys were thirsty and didn't understand what basketball teams were. Should be in our bout, man. No shade to you, Derrick Rose, man. But that injury set off maybe the longest running <clears throat> crusade of hate I have enjoyed in Chicago sports history against its fans. Social media. Uh, as far as Facebook and Instagram, let anybody have it, bro. Everybody, memes, gifs, your mama jokes, all that shit. They got it, bro. And Chicago was never the same. That's like the bad chick at the ball that nobody asked out and not calling Derrick Rose a woman. Chicago getting Derrick Rose was like the bad chick in the school that nobody asked out, you know what I'm saying? Cold. And the fans are like the people that want to do it, so they going to... Mm. Get together, brother. So they gonna so not for real. <laughs> and, and they, they, and they, they don't, they don't want to ask nobody out, but feel entitled because they think that no, they they the jock of the school. Chicago fans are the jock of the school. They think they deserve. You know what I'm saying? The bad shit because they the jock of the school. They, they you Chicago fans is you. You know what I'm saying? I am Chicago, Let's be clear. <laughs> bro. And that's why y'all don't get each other, bro. Because y'all didn't deserve that. Y'all didn't deserve that man. He didn't deserve to get hurt, but they didn't deserve that man. Period. So with all that said and done, no, still no, no, nigga. For what? S second ballot? Sympathy. If they got a sympathy ballot, yes. They have a sympathy, a sympathy ballot? Absolutely. He can get in the Hall of Fame, bro. Uh, the, the NBA Hall of Fame is so watered down anyway, man. It is. It's so watered down, So again, bro. That, that's the argument. With I use this all the time. If Bill Lambeer is in the Hall of Fame, okay, there's no reason why a player like Derrick Rose can't get in. And he's all NBA this, all NBA that, three-time All-Star, youngest MVP of the league ever. Okay, uh, and there are there's a large population of Hall of Famers that were league MVPs. So I, in my mind, he makes the criteria, or he he's he's checking some of those boxes. So he don't got a chance to be the first one not to make it. Yeah, that's you yeah, be yeah. Reality I mean, if we, if, if, if we keeping it real, it's possible. Well, okay, besides that moment you mentioned, besides the youngest MVP ever, 
three All Stars. It's, it's it's hard to be. First of all, it's hard to be an All Star because it's so hard to make it to the league. So I can't even dismiss that. It's all NBA uh, uh, awards. What what makes you besides them? What makes you say, man, this dude belongs in the Hall of Fame? I, I can't say it. He got he got Hall of he got All World Game. So so I right, never translated to the court, bro, because he didn't do it long if enough. You, if you want me to be real, I'll just say it like this. Um, it finishes the story. A hometown kid plays for plays for his crib. Right. He get to retire here, bro. That's the end of his story, bro. Well, uh, okay. So to that point, he should have came back to the Bulls, played the game, and then retired. But again, the Bulls, the Bulls, we all know the Bulls organization is ass. So Jeez. they they Super. weren't gonna do that no way. But um, yeah, I mean, for me, it would be a good a good book to read, right? Given <laughs> where he came from, you watch the movie, dog. Why you exactly. The so so I want everyone else. My I want Sun Sun to be able to understand Derrick Rose. You got to orate that, bro. You have to For be sure. Tour For that, sure. Bro. And while Derrick Rose wasn't dancing, while everybody else was, you know, uh, classic, them, them, class, them, them, them clowns that they call, they call the people that were dancing, they went on to win championships, you know. And this is how ass the Bulls organization is. Them clowns tried to come here. The Bulls can make it work. I'm not calling D-Rose a liar. I'm not calling all the insiders and the, the people that, that were in the know. I'm not calling them liars about the Bulls bum, uh, bumbling a chance to have LeBron play here or, or Wade, and Wade play here. Another Chicago bred, Chicago raised. We can dispute where he's from. A Chicago raised kid come here and he had, now that's a Hall of Famer. No questions asked. Another guy to play both ends of the court, just like Derrick Rose. Imagine, imagine D Rose and D and D Wade in the backcourt, bro. Tough. That's disgusting, dog. Tough. Disgusting, bro. And then you go down to the three man. Come on, bro. Tough. Who's stopping that? Chicago, y'all some morons to this day. I will never cheer for y'all. Never cheer for y'all. I hope y'all never win, bro. I'm glad DeMar got up out of here. For real. He deserved better than what y'all was giving him. Absolutely. Well, coming up off of that, man, I would just want to just say shout out to Moors, man. Get you one, get you some. These boys are moving, man. We are happy to be in partnership with them. Uh, today, I'm going to go ahead and go with the gold because I'm feeling gold then. <laughs> you want to go? Living he, my he, life like it's gold. He not getting no gold jacket, though. <laughs> Shit. Tell you that much. Bet it. But you know what, though? <laughs> you want sure. to make that bet, bro? Bet it. Bet it. Episode 218, I'm betting Boxy 50 bucks. He gets in the Hall of Fame. Now, I'm not going to go first or second ballot, but he gets in. You hedge that motherfucking bet real hard. Yeah, for sure. Early. You are trash for that. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not playing no games with you. I ain't scared. He ain't getting in. All right. Stand on me. My legs get tired from standing on business, bro. Stop playing with me. Um, oh, shit. You know what? Some dope shit happened today, man. I want to give a huge uh, shout out to my boy, my guy, friend of the show, uh, Fillmore Green, man. New album just dropped, man. Hold on. Hold on. That shit is, that shit is fire. Let's, Let's start get there. To it. Okay, shout out to him. To him, shout out to Apollo um, for the project. It's simply amazing, to really be honest with you. Um, I, I didn't expect anything less. Um, I do have a few highlights on that album. And the album is called The Grand Design. Okay. And I remember he hit he he hit me and said, uh, hey man, I need you to do me a favor. He was like, I'm, you know, working on the album. Can you tell me what you you know you think the grand design is? I'm looking for some uh, inspiration, if you will, right? So I did it. I sent it to him, man. So the corner convo, your boy A M O N. Say what you want. Just spell my name right. Uh, <laughs> you go that shit. Man. We are officially on a a national album, a hip hop album. Shout out, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. By God, we consider a, a, a entertainer. A rapper and a lyricist. Yeah. And if you consider anything else, you the fool. Yeah. K-Town's finest, man. You know, a <laughs> lot, lot of good work come out of K-Town, man. What do you mean by work? A lot of good work, man, depending on what you're cooking. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Big facts, bro. Uh, Some of the best neck throwers in the city. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all go get that grand design, man. Fillmore Green, uh, download it, run it, run it up, run the numbers up. I'm going to say this, though. Ghetto Babies, that's my joint. Just listen to it all the way through, man. You're going to hear something something very familiar. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but no, that was dope, man. Like, that's that's I, definitely uh, in the squad car I work tonight. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was really dope. That was just a sidebar. Um, where do you want to go next, that's bro? That's major, though, bro. That's, that's major oh, shit, though, bro. You know what? Before before we leave... Oh, here's another reason um, why... No. <laughs> why he should get in. You, you've heard of the Rose Rule? As far as contracts? Yeah. I forgot what it entails, but what they got to do anything. Well, because of him, people like uh, for the max deal, qualify for the max, something like that. Yeah. So basically, what it is is you'll get thirty percent more of the salary cap, right? Um, 
if you hit these get these accolades. You know what I'm saying? So Derrick Rose kind of changed that. So you know a, what kind of a player, player like Halliburton, a player like Anthony Edwards, right? Mm -hmm. They've benefited from the Rose Rule. Cool. So basically they, they put in place um win the MVP award, be selected to two uh all NBA teams, be voted as an all-star starter twice, right? So if you do that within your first contract, boom, because of the collective bargaining agreement, right? You can now leverage that and get paid before your contract is up. City boys up, come on. You know what I mean? So again, my thing is when you're able to change the game, even though this is business changing the game, um, it has to be honored. You got to be honored, man, because because of him, now other players can get paid and, and not have the NBA squeeze everything out of you and not pay you in those years. Don't That was nasty, but... It's you know, funny. It's borderline. It borderline. It's funny how you want to give him. I don't think you ever hate on this other part though, but you want to give him credit for that. Kudos for that. But so many, and probably other people do too though. But somebody called Flack for making the league mobile for players. A, 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 a big name, the GOAT called Flack when he left Cleveland to go to Miami for making the league mobile for players and not being at the, uh, the whim or the, not being under the, the thumb of the GM, bro, or the organization. You know what I'm saying? People don't, don't, don't want to give him credit for that, but want to give Rose credit for this. Cool. Hey, man, look, I, I don't write this shit. You know I'm what I'm saying? saying? I mean, cool. I'm I'm not here. L listen here, Sh Shannon. I, I know you you sleep with LeBron every other night. I'm just saying. That was nasty That was nasty work. as fuck. I do you know not sleep with LeBron. <laughs> fuck. Every um, it's not no freak off. <laughs> every, it, it, out west. Every it's not time no we, party we get west. into LeBron, man, you do not have to get aggressive, man. <laughs> I don't understand it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to sleep with LeBron. All right. LeBron, duh. <laughs> uh, what else we got, man? Let's see here. Oh, you know what? Chicago's the greatest, the greatest city on earth. Everything dope comes from Chicago. He ain't lying. We witnessed history yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the trash ass South Side. Oh, my okay? God. Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan, Carlton Fisk. Harold Baines. Harold Baines. Keep, keep, keep going, bro. Frank Thomas. Yeah. Shoeless Joe Jackson <laughs> is turning over in his grave in right grave. now. We witness history on the downside of history. Oh my Your God. Your Chicago bro. White Sox set an MLB record. Single season record, bro. 31 and 129 losses. Mm. Most losses in the history of. Of the league. Bro, that takes skill. That's a skill set. That takes intention to do that. That is a loser <laughs> mentality. How do you go to work every day? Uh, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. With your hard hat on. T literally your hard hat on. D that this is this is unacceptable. <laughs> you cannot consider yourself a professional. It's Chicago. <laughs> I would love to be in that locker room. That that had to be like major league when they when uh the movie made Wesley's league. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> this shit is terrible. And and for all you got. You will see clips of Cubs fans fighting the Sox fans. I don't even know why. Like, it's it's a game. <laughs> and they go viral for this shit. And they fight for them. So, and this is the problem. There's a deeper conversation here, if you really think about it. Chicago teams are ass. And, I, and, and, and again, man, we are from Chicago and we love Chicago. But if you're being honest as a Chicago fan honest, of sports, right, we still sell out arenas. And ballparks, no matter what. You see my issue though, right? No, no matter who who's on the field. You know what I mean? And if we happen to luck up and get a good team, then so be it. But there's never no never any money put into these organizations and these players. Well, so we can enough. put the best product on the field. The Bulls did a good job recently by giving them a watchable team when Demar had the MVP type season with Zach Levine and and all the other boys that was playing, playing, they was really playing ball, you know what I'm saying? But dog. I was looking for a silver lining for the White Sox. I'm a Sox fan, bro. You know, fuck it. You know, I'm a West Sider. Uh, the White Sox has a better, they have a better stadium. They got better food. They drinks are better. They got parking. You might get robbed, you know, because by the Woodworth Gardens, but you know, hey, man, it's worth it. Ain't no parking up north. Ain't really, the drinks really ain't, ain't shit inside Wrigley Field. Let me say it again. Ain't no parking up north. You might get your booty grabbed on up north. You, know you definitely saying? gonna get robbed out south too. Not to cut y'all, but I've seen. Said that. I've seen. No, no. I'm, I'm, I, I've seen motherfuckers act like they are parking attendants. The valet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, on yeah. the ramp. Lot B. Yeah. Come on, lot B. <laughs> hey, your coffee hey, to be gone. 
You know what I'm saying? Come on, lock B. Yeah. The hustle and the grind in Chicago is crazy. Go ahead, man. I'm so wait, wait, so do you do you stereotype when you look for parking? Is it safe to stereotype when you're looking for parking by uh guarantee rate? You damn right you better stereotype. <laughs> you better be as prejudiced as you need to be to stay safe and, and keep your car. Hey, but they do it by the Bull Stadium too, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so parking by Ricky might be the safest then. Because ain't, no, ain't no parking lot. Zero. <laughs> They got a few, but they cost 50 bucks. Oh, my God, bro. He said, yeah, come right here. See. See your car for the last time, fam. Bro. Parking lot D. Leave them keys right here with me. I got you. So, all right. Tell me how Tell me gone. how an organization sets a league record for losses, which should never happen, especially in Chicago. Why haven't they fired this, this, this manager? You know what I mean? Any of the execs, any of the GMs? Because I want to talk about the fact that you also got Teresa Rutherspoon getting fired after one season, you know. Yeah, I don't think the two. Uh, if there's no correlation, cool. Yeah, I don't but think they're related. How the fuck do you go the whole season and you don't fire a motherfucker? You don't shake nothing up. Well, it depends on what you expected from that squad. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they expect you to win, I'm sure. About two, three years ago, the White Sox had a farm system that was like, hey, man, people trying to get pieces from us. We're bringing people up. But I played like Eloy Jimenez, kept getting hurt. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, it was ridiculous. Kept getting hurt. And, and the turnover in baseball is fast. And, uh, and if injury strikes you, bro, you can just give it up. But I don't know. Fuck the White Sox. I got to go back to Chicago, Sky. I'm glad you mentioned that. Spoon, as they call, affectionately call her. A great player, a WNBA Hall of Great, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why she is a coach, but somebody tell Angel Reese. I read Angel Reese's letter, right? That she wrote to Spoon. I thought Teresa Whitmore had dad, had, had died or something, bro. I thought she was dead, bro. <laughs> We're gonna miss you. You're gonna be gone. It's gonna be hard without you. Look like that's a eulogy in this bitch. Facts. Somebody gotta get a hold of baby girl with all the bars and fans. Let her know it's time to grow up now and be a professional. This is not LSU anymore. Professional, this is a business now. Now the game is, is less of a game than it was in college because college is still not the game. You can talk about the Neil deals now in college. It's a business, you know what I'm saying? Uh, in, in, the, the, in the big leagues, with the big boys and big girls, it's more of a business than ever before. Look here, look here, uh, Angel. Would you rather them trade your teammates, your sisters you are to the war with, or trade the coach? Because you know when the organization loses, who's the first to go? The coach. They, don't, they don't fire players. They it's fire the coach, coaches. fam. And if, and if, if Angel and her Reese's Pieces didn't... Uh, Realized that when Chicago got traded, they leading scorer that they were trying to tank. Then she really got a lot, lot, lot to learn, bro. And that, that's really it, dog. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, Spoon. See you later. Y'all went from WNBA champion to y'all missing the playoffs. Shout out to Candace Parker, man. You know what I'm saying? Got that shit. That was a squad. Yeah, that was that was a squad, bro. You know, it's it's unfortunate, man. Um, I, I had the pleasure or the unfortunate pleasure of going to a game. It was it was cool, <laughs> and it wasn't it wasn't the the players. It it was. The wind trust. The nachos. The, the nachos, no cheese. It's crazy. Um, I don't I have a problem with that though. I have a problem with you not sticking with a coach who left the NBA as an assistant coach to come down to the WNBA, because it is a step down, coach these women up, and then you fire her after one season. What did you expect? Your two draft picks were solid. One of them didn't even play. I don't know. I don't know what you're looking for. So, did this decision come from somebody back door? Like, yeah, look, Spoon, I fuck with you in her face, but then the whole time you in the GM office, look, she got to go. You heard his locker room problem too, right? That's yeah, the rumors. I mean, you can't you can't control the locker room. You have no chance of having that team play cohesively on the court. Everybody can't do a, a Phil, Shaq, and Kobe. Or a feel, damn, that's crazy. A feel, a feel, Mike, Scotty, and Dennis. Everybody can't do that, bro. You know what I'm saying? So if it's not working in there and what's, what's in-house starts to get portrayed or shown or projected out-house, somebody got to go. And it's always the coach. That's the cheapest, that's the cheapest option. That's oh, the cheapest option, bro. And my bad, my bad. It was not, it was not Portland. It was the Pelican. Excuse me. Again, she was four years. Having women you didn't, you didn't in the say NBA, a name, bro. Huh? You didn't say a name. You were still safe. You didn't say a name. I didn't. Okay. Well, I thought it was important. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Ha having women in 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 the NBA as coaches is groundbreaking, right? You have to really love the game to take a step down to go coach the WNBA. Is it a connection thing too? Though you felt to make a name with your sisters. 
your sisters going into battle, your young soldiers going into battle, more you connect, connect with the, uh, the big dogs already in battle. And I'm not trying to put a level between the, well, the two leagues, but it is though. I mean, again, she played she played in, in the WNBA in, right. in its inception, right? And she was one of the the players that would be on Sports Center, right? And would right. talk her shit, right? So I don't think it was a bad look. I think it was her taking advantage of an opportunity. But it just it's just mind boggling how you don't give this woman at least three seasons. You're not owed anything. You're not. Getting these jobs is a privilege, bro. So either you walk into the right situation. It's unfortunate for her. Either you walk into the right situation and you get to uh, turn up immediately or you walk to a good program or you get the, the deal that Teresa was uh, dealt. You get the hands she was So dealt. where does she go now? Because she, she's in the WNBA Hall of Fame. She can go home if she wants to. Well, she, she can go she can home. She can go on the beach. She can go back to the league, the real league, and is get it, that back. Is the opportunity still open for her? If she was solid, she was she was in uh you know in New I, Orleans you know for four these, years. These teams gonna replace her at that position, bro. So you can keep that good look about equity, you know what I'm saying? Being fair. Mm. All that shit, bro. Come on now. Mm. Which leads us talk about equity. Uh I need look at ladies at WMEA. It may sound harsh, but take it from, you know, after you, you know this already. Look at the men's league. The Russell Westbrook situations, the Chris Paul situations, the LeBron James situations, all situations where players have been in stadiums and arenas where fans get beside themselves, get drunk, get get uh, beer, beer balls, you know, get their liquid courage and start saying racist shit to players that are not of the same ethnicity, background, or racist damn bro. Look here. To hear y'all crying about racism in the WNBA, I want to tell y'all shut the fuck up. Y'all want equity? This is equity. You got to deal with fuck. You got to deal with that shit. It happens. It happens now. What's more important is having your sisters have your back on the court where the shit don't bother you. Definitely speak up about it. Say, well, say your piece. Talk back to the fans. Hell, get fine. Go on stands like Ron Artest. Be like Captain Jack and Jamal Tindy. Go tear that shit up. Go tear it up. You know what I'm saying? But look here. Don't see that cry about what it's going to do. Now you want simply empty. Y'all want the equity. Y'all want to be the same shit. Y'all want to be paid more. Y'all want to do everything the boys want to do. The girls want to play in the sandbox with the boys. We, we told y'all it's different over here. Y'all want it? It's different over here. We let y'all in anyway. Y'all kick the dough in partially as well. But now, because somebody said something about some eyelashes and some nails, shut the fuck up. Shut that shit up, man. That's all they got. That's light work. Deal with it. I've heard the racial slurs, right? And it is, this is specifically um, in Indiana, which I know that you can speak to, right? Well, that's um, shit racist. <laughs> yeah, that's just super racist, You know bro. what I'm saying? But <laughs> this is nothing new when you are a professional athlete. Nope. It's right? called hate. I mean, they 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 spray painted LeBron's garage. Yeah. Right. Um, Russell, in a game, he stopped the game. Like, no, nah, fam, get him out of here. Right. You're real. So the thing is, right, fans, when you hear this shit going on, don't hold this fan accountable next to you. Or players, if you run in the triangle and you can spot and hear and see, a couple timeouts go by, these motherfuckers is still heckling me, saying all some crazy shit. Call traveling on me. I'm pulling up. <laughs> right, ref, him right there, security, him right there. Get him up out of here, right? Because they're trying to make a spectacle out of you, right? So let's make this a moment. And now, now you got done, 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 right? Big so facts. Now, now, now they're out of 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 the the game, and prob and probably won't have any any access to the stadium moving forward. Dang so you can use all your racial slurs behind your computer at home. You know what I mean? In, in, in your Ku Klux Klan meetings, wherever it is that you do what you do, right? To be racist or or super offensive to these these women basketball players, do that shit in the confines of your own fucking home. And I would also ask other fans, if you're not on that type of time, check their motherfucking ass. I'm glad you said that, bro. I'm super glad you said that. So why is it 97.99% of the time? That only the players hear it. The coach don't hear it. The training staff don't hear it. The other fans don't hear it, bro. This is really suspicious. This is really suspicious, bro. I'm not saying it's not happening, but it's really suspicious. Nobody hears it but y'all. Nobody. I'm not saying it don't happen, because we know it happens. It's just now the other people that's not on the court with you on that bench, the actual players not having your back, or is this not really a thing, or are you... Joe, what is it, bro? Because now, am I wrong so far? Well, are you, are you, are you talking about Players, I'm talking about the training staff, the coaching staff, and the fans that be next to these fans. You talking about that are irate? I never hear them really say shit. Only like 97 percent of the time, it's only the players speaking out. Nobody says, "Hey, man, that player out of control. That that fan out of control." The coach don't be like, "Hey, ref, you know." This guy, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to coach a game. I don't. I don't have time for that. So since you said that, I'm trying to the, coach the game. player. Trying to play a game. Ignore that shit until you can. Men too. 
But if the coach can ignore it, why the players can't? So until you can't, so whenever you break, then it's it's go time. That's all I'm saying. Bro, you was in Indiana getting buckets, Indiana State, excuse me, getting buckets as a sycamore, the blue and white. There you go. Right? You know how much racism happens in the state of Indiana. That shit happened when I got a bit in Indiana. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> you play on the Indiana. fucking squad. So I'm saying, yes, you can you can ignore it, but until until you can't. I guess it's not fair for me to say what they should do because I can do it or I did do it. You know what I'm saying? But it may help you if you could ignore it and have your teammates and the fans and the coach and the trainer staff. I'm saying it again. The coaches never say shit until they hear from the players. The trainer staff absolutely never says shit. The assistant coaches never say shit. And the fans never say shit, you know? But it's not fair for me to hold everybody to the standards I hold myself to. Well, I, what I didn't like, what I, I like, I didn't like. Fuck them eyelashes, um, though, bro. Aly Alyssa Thomas came out, you know, after they won and and said that this is unfair, it's unreasonable. Excuse me, this is unnecessary. It's hurtful, right? Um, and people people said, "Oh, you're whining, you're crying. Stop this." You know what I mean? Like it's is part she? of the game. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think so. I why, think, why isn't she whining? I, be because. This isn't the first time that we've seen this. Why AK can play in the AK play? You know, it's, it's the same so thing. So she's ignored it until she broke, bro. That's all I'm saying. And and if if the guys, I've seen, we've we've all seen guys break, have people kicked out of the league for saying, or kicked out of the stadium for saying some shit. It's cool to be a fan, right? They call it the, the, the dudes whiners too. Equity, bro. I don't, I don't think I don't think that's whining, bro. Like at the end of the day, I'm still a, because I'm playing ball, but I'm still a fucking human. You know what I'm saying? You're not saying none, none of this. Cracker, you know what I'm saying? What, what, whatever. You never know. No, they're not, dog. We, we don't, we don't, we, we, we not, we not. We don't get all that time. We, we don't, we, we, we do don't, entertainment for us, we though. don't have a stadium full of 20,000 black folks only watching white folks only and calling them all the der derogatory names. You know, how we, you know how we do it? White men can't jump. You know how we do it? <laughs> you, know, you know how we do it? Come on now. Let's not, let's not, come on, let's go, ahead, go ahead. Let's go there. Let's go there. Oh man, you know, I'm gonna pick him at the gym because he is, y'all, y'all, he slashed him, dribbler, uh, dunker. Oh, I need the white, but he'll shoot him. That's how that's how that's how racism gets off right there. That's how we get our racism off right there, bro. Oh, man, we get him. He played fundamental basketball. He he he. he that's not basketball. racism, bro. Bro. Damn. We let's go, let's go. We here now. That's not that's not okay. racism, bro. Is it stereotypical? Yes, that's that's stereotype. That's not racist. So how is eyelashes racism? I don't agree that that is racism. So what I, are we talking about, dude? I, I think that's just uh, fans Stereo talk, talking about women. But you know, stereotypes have roots in or racism, negatively. Though. Can we can we agree here or do we disagree? Stereotypes have roots in racism, though. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Like, we won't just split hairs. We split hairs and just have a bullshit conversation. We can keep it above. We pick them white boys so they can shoot. We pick the, white people uh, come to the parties because they pay half the bill. You know what I'm saying? White, they walk in playing. <laughs> white folks are cops. You, you go get a white girl because she, she heard she sucked dick faster than a black girl will. Come on, man. It's, it rears his head everywhere, bro. So let's not get playing because it's in the sport. You're getting paid for it. I'm not saying because you're getting paid, you should be subjected to all this other goofy shit that goes on, but you're getting paid for it when, hey, man, come on, dog. You like Matt McClung, he can't do nothing. Shout out to Matt, man. He got that contract, hey, baby. Say, he can jump, but he can't shoot. Look at that. Look at reverse racism. Go he, ahead, right? He low-key your brother. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker, dear ah, boy. Matt, you can come to the barbecue, <laughs> y'all. You are not invited to cookout. You either Justin. Marshall Brosha told her you Justin Timberlake. Oh, oh yeah. Got on your bumper. Yeah. Your cookout pass, your guest pass to the cookout. Take him back, bro. Take him back. So I did. I, I did like what what Caitlin Clark said, man. She What's said, she she supposed those, to say? "Those are not fans. Those are trolls, right?" Uh, she wrong. Nobody in our league should be facing any sort of racism, disrespectful or hurtful comments and threats. Okay, right? leave, and, leave the know, racism and threats alone. But other uh, shit, the, the hateful speech. What? It's a game. Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan had a heckler that was famous. I don't know what the heckler was saying, but that shit makes you go. If that don't drive you to kill, man, look here, bro. If that don't push you. To kill your man, you not a hoop or competitor. Fuck out my face. Maybe, maybe it's the Shot Town way or the Mama mentality or the MJ way or the, or the King James way, bro. We gonna kill our man. So we a woman. I got a story. We in wait racing Rex, Wisconsin. Racist. Juco. Somehow I forgot my game shorts, and I had these other little small little Nike shorts that I would wear. On my <laughs> yeah, shorts, yeah right? uh, skibbies. I mean, yeah, they was OC, right? <laughs> Grammar school gym shorts and. <laughs> Couldn't find another pair of shorts, so I had to play in these joints, right? You know, it's out there showing thigh meat. So I'm, I'm talking about they cooking me in the stands. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm all kind of whatever. I tuned that shit out. I think I had 29 that game. That's nice, nice bag, bro. You know How many what I'm saying? Uh, six. I was, I, I was cooking. Three rebounds. 
time. Yes. No, I was zero. <laughs> Give the ball to mine that day. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm talking about I'm cooking, and I felt like I felt like I tuned out the noise. Come on now. The basket couldn't be bigger. Ball player. No one in front of me I saw. Hooper. L- lay after lay. Zone. Lay okay. after lay. Shot zone. after shot. Rod was there. Twan P was there. Like, yeah, yeah, y'all sit and watch greatness. What the day. fuck was y'all doing racing together as a unit, bro? Hey, man. Now hey, you man, get a real story. That's Juco, man. We, huh? We, 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 it was a road trip. What you talking about? Right, that road trip was one for the books. Absolutely. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? I want to hear that story. Fuck, um, that, fuck them game highlights, bro. I want to yeah. hear other stories. Yeah, it, it, it was a thing, man. We, we, <laughs> we definitely took, took they whole, you know, home squad and wherever we went that night. You know what I'm saying? They, you know how they it goes. They ain't deserve them, yeah. Fuck them. If you, if you if you get twenty nine dropped on you in skibbies, bro, and hoochie daddy shorts, Bruh. man, look at somebody getting fired. <sighs> it was definitely some thought spotters out there because I, I was I was, <laughs> I, was <laughs> I was I was I was hurt that day, man, and I didn't want to take nobody else shorts. I was like, fucking, I, you know, I hold myself accountable. You know, no nut fungus. Yeah, no, nah, that, that just wasn't okay with me. Gross, bro. Gross. Yeah. Um. <laughs> shot spotters down to shot spotters that's why we picked the white boys we, we, we spot shooters we picked the white boys at the crowd that's stereotypes you know what I'm saying bro laying all the way back from basketball back to Chicago back to the city bro we had this for y'all that don't know uh, we had this technology called shot spotters where in the past somebody could get shot and be laying there for 15 20 minutes or until they die before a 911 call came in or a call was ever made what shot spotter did was the sound of gunfire will be alerted and sent to 911 immediately. Immediately. There's no wait time. Because if you know the process, if somebody calls 911, it got to go to a call taker. The call taker got to take notes on it, write it up, get your name information, send it to a dispatcher in the next room upstairs. You know what I'm saying? By carrier pigeon or page or something like that, goddammit. Because <laughs> it took forever to get there, goddammit. And then the call comes to the police. That's a good eight minutes right there. That could save somebody's life. What shots about did was cut down the time in between to give Officers, better chance, a better chance to, to get the spots and get the bad guy. Uh, air quotes on bad guy. You know how police get down sometimes. Or get there and save somebody's life, bro. The first night. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That contract ended last week or some days ago. Boom. The first night it ended, somebody got shot underneath where a shot spotter was. And she bled out and she died, fam. You know, I think, I think this is another uh, strike against our mayor. I forgot his name now. I'm not gonna say Johnson. it. Johnson. Yeah, Brandon Johnson, man. I'm tired of saying his name, but I gave you so many chances, you know, to get shit right. And all you did was act like the Chicago White Sox and get shit wrong. Strikeout after strikeout after strikeout, bro. This is what was one of the one things you could have held your hat on and, and said, look here, I kept shot spotted for the city to help keep the city safe. Instead of saying some shit like we got to take them, take that resources. We got to use different resources and put them somewhere else to uh keep the city safe. There was no better tool than actual real good policing. And shot spotters to keep the city safe. It was a bad idea. Do you do you think that they got rid of this uh, for money reasons? Because if I saw the stats and it, the response time was obviously quicker. Um, so this would be a win. Right? Definitely a win. If you can save a life and get there 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes earlier, then you're saving lives. Yeah. Time, time is of the essence, bro. So to me, if you're being, if we're being honest, you don't care about Chicago. You don't care about Chicago. I can't say he do. This I can't say he don't though, but I can't say he and, do. And, and we know that he's having physical, fiscal uh issues or financial issues for lame oh, terms. Fiscal. Fiscal, yeah. He inherited some of that though, bro, but he didn't make it no better. Um you yourself it, have you found it useful? Uh, to have a uh, spot. Shot spotters? Shot Absolutely, spotters. because uh, <clears throat> it saves time. It saves lives. How many times have you seen a video where, or like a media takeout or somewhere, be like, check this out. This is crazy. You see a big shootout going on, and once they're done shooting, the cops drive past oblivious to what was just happening, bro. That's for our safety, too. Like, bro, you took away mm. one of the, the biggest safety measures the city has ever had. You know? Since before, oh, my God, look here. Has ever had, bro. I thank y'all for the uh, the red light cameras. Good idea to me. Except y'all abuse me, get money. You know, stop running lights, man. Y'all hit too many people, too many hit runs going on. The pod cameras to see what crime is actually going to. You know, even though y'all abuse that shot spot was one thing you couldn't fuck up. You couldn't fuck up, but because 
I think I forgot what year it was, but a young man in Adam Toledo got shot. And the people blame the shot spotter alerting the police to the area as the reason why Toledo got shot. You know, he did he have a gun? Yes. In my mind, he had tossed it. He, he had no position to really shoot the gun, you know, at the police. But police, it's a split second, it's a split second decision. A split second decision, bro. But they blame the shot spotter for that. And that's what all starts spiraling down there, bro. And I think that was just a, a, an egregious mistake on the city's part. And it definitely saved money, but how much money to actually save? So it's safe to say that Brother Johnson only believes in, in, in or walks by faith and not by sight because the spot. Shot spotter. Shot spotter. What the fuck? My mind's everywhere right now. Okay. Say it one more time for me. Shot spotter. Shot spotter, right? Top shot top. <laughs> Face ass. <laughs> shot spotter, right? Um, you know, again, when I'm out and I get a call, like you said, I want to know what I'm walking into. Walking into. Right? Now I, I'm walking blind again. Yeah. Right? So not only do you not care about the public, you don't care about the officers. And you got to think too, bro. Think about the culture now where people, more so than ever, aren't calling the police because there's a no snitching culture. They, they want to be involved. We, we saw an era in Chicago, an era in Chicago where witnesses was getting knocked off. Like people that were going to testify against were getting knocked off by associates of the people they were, they were testifying against, bro. So now you're in, you're in a spot where if someone gets hurt, maimed, shot, anything happens, you know what I'm saying? It's a 50-50 chance. I think a less than 50% chance that somebody's not going to call and say, hey, they shooting over here. Because as long as there ain't no bullets coming through, they wouldn't do. They people are hit, they're not giving a fuck because they safe, bro. And it's sad that the city has got, we got we to be honest, but the city's dying. The city's, it's not on life support yet, but the city's dying. But we need somebody to come save this bad boy, bro. And it's dying because of money. We're looking, we looking like the next Detroit in the future. The old Detroit that, that got tore down, was run down. We looking like that. And I don't want to see that. But if, if so, guess what? I'm straight. I'm out this bitch. I'm done. How far are we going? Nigga, that's good. Well, ain't no winner. Out of states or, or are we just going to the burbs? Well, first of all, I'm going with Chase can wear uh, the little shorts with the slit on the side every day. It had his stomach out. Oh, so we, it's hot. I'm going with no, no, no less than 65 degrees when it's cold, cold like that. I'm mm. going west, southwest. Mm. I'm going southwest, bro. Texas, here we go. Man, bro. Anywhere but Houston. <laughs> y'all keep them STDs, bro. I'm <laughs> they, cool. They, I told y'all. I told y'all two weeks ago when y'all was going out to take over Houston. I said, man, look at all y'all going out to contribute to the STD rate. And guess what happened? The report came out. Y'all got that burning up again. Burn it up again, dog. So, Burn it up again, wait, dog. Wait, wait, Don't bring that shit back here. We got wait, enough problems. So, so Chicago then went down there and, and doubled up. and doubled and brought it back. Either they motherfucking dropped some off and deposited, or they, they, they didn't pick up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bought this shit back. I don't know. Hey, hey to but, all my guys, Houston man. was not happy though. All my guys, uh, stay away from me, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't, <laughs> don't put me out your cup, your glass, no nothing. No Wash your hands. Up. All that. <laughs> that, that's hilarious, bro. Nasty knuckles. It's oh, okay. Oh man. Um before we get out of here, let's let's uh let's catch a flight. I wanna go to New York. <laughs> One way. Hey, I need a round trip. I ain't staying there. All it, I'm gonna say it's is crazy this, over man. There right now. Um all the shit and hate and and truth and facts that we give on Brandon Johnson, Mayor Brandon Johnson, he would never be indicted. <laughs> no. I don't um, think so. Eric Adams. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he pled not guilty to indictment charges for uh wire fraud and hold on. Let, let me let so me listen to illegal funds. Let's, let's using get... campaign money for uh trips or something like that. For yeah. the typical stuff that nobody ever gets away with, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ever. No help gets ever. away so with dog. Really, you got set up, goof ass boy. <laughs> um, so look, look, he he was accused. The Democrat was accused of taking a variety of improper gifts from Turkish officials, business people, including free hotel stays, uh, deeply discounted airline tickets. The fact that it's deeply, deeply, deeply discounted. discounted is crazy. That's ugly um, work. To destinations, France, China, mm, Sri now. Lanka, India, Hungary, Ghana, Turkey. This is bucket list. He was just on a war tour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He wanted to see the world. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm not mad as you want to see the world. What's in Sri Lanka, though, bro? I never even heard. I've heard of Sri Lanka. I'm going to say, don't do that, bro. I wouldn't, you, you wanna, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go to Sri Lanka. It's not on my list of destinations. At all. It's not. At all. So, low key, man, uh, he he remixed I'm been around. <laughs> I've, I've been, been around, around the world. world. Boom, 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 you know what I'm saying? Around. Like, yeah, it's absolutely. been a bad, it's been a bad time for New York, man. So 
um, Eric Adams and Diddy, man, what y'all got going on out there in New York, man, it's, it's not okay. It it's not okay. Keep it that way, man. Like, you've been seeing, uh, have you been seeing the little excerpts of uh, Kim Porter's book and and uh, the, the notes from the legal document filed from the latest accusation of sexual assault against Diddy? Yes. Yes. And what's your thoughts on that, bro? It's nasty. Okay. It's nasty. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to go too in depth with the whole Kim Porter thing. Too in depth. With um, I don't know if it's her, if it's her memoir or not. Right. Cause we don't I'll be saying, you know, she it's, it's false, but he should say that. Considering what was said. Right. I you know would say the same. This is a mess in New York, bro. Yeah, man. Y'all, hey, hey. <laughs> Some mess in New R York. Rory, Maul. <laughs> Come on, y'all. The fuck y'all got going on out there, y'all man? Y'all got to pull them boys together, man. Get them, tighten them up, bro. Right. Tighten them up. <laughs> tighten them up out there, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is, this is disgusting. Um, if any of these stories, uh, memoirs, journals, texts, videos, if it's true... Again, it's nasty work, uh, but it's not the first time. You know, again, you got Russell, you got Epstein. Um, who else is on that list? Uh, of course, Kells. Uh, uh, nasty people? Yeah. Kevin Spacey. Spacey. Uh, you just go on the list, bro. Let's be very clear. Everybody that's nasty didn't get caught up. Facts. Didn't caught up. You got, you got your, your Elvises, you know. We know you, you like them young, too, though, bro. Y'all need to get Mike Jacks off their list, though, okay? Mike didn't touch them kids. I'm sorry. The man wouldn't wash his own nuts. He wore a glove. How you gonna touch somebody through a glove? You can't do it, man. Now, now was becoming a, a white woman from a black man weird? Yes. Was wanting to be a kid at, at, in your 40s weird? Yes. I don't ever believe he touched them kids, though. I don't believe that either. But I want to stay in New York. We, we already left the Midwest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, left, we left Gary? Yeah, we left Gary. We out of this. Um, look, y'all are overpopulated. Your rats actually run the city. The mob the immigrants started, the too started now, there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Y'all have jack drill music from us. Couldn't do it like us, though. And now... Y'all pizza nasty. Y'all mayor... Y'all traffic fucked up. Talk about it. And all that shit, but just so much going on. Y'all, y'all, the price of rent is way too high, like that motherfucker said back, back way when. Way too high. Way too high, bro. I've been there. I've looked at some shit. Nine hundred square feet for two thousand dollars. I'm cool. You gotta yo. be fucked up. You gotta be in New York next this weekend coming up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be in New York coming up, brother. <laughs> Shout out to the homie, man. Get the homie in the show. Absolutely. Out, man. Shout out to Aerie Spears, man. Uh, flying out to uh, keep the man safe as he continues in his legendary comedy, his comedic career. You know what I'm saying? It's my first time going to the Apollo. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Lucky if they'll put a spotlight on me, I'll get the tips. You know what I'm saying? Make sure, you, make, make sure you rub the wood, pause. <laughs> <laughs> you got you can't go to Apollo and not rub the wood, bro. We got to change. We got to, <laughs> that, that don't got a name or something, bro. That's what it's called, bro. <laughs> I, you know I, no, mean? I will not be rubbing the wood. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you know, you out in New York, you know, my folks get a little different when they get when out. When Rome does the Romans do? Yeah. Nah, man, you know. I mean I mean you, you let a you let a, a tech rub you down last week. He definitely tried to take me to the freak off. Yeah. He definitely I look here. I, I didn't fight it. It's okay. fucked up, man. Look here. It's a problem. I don't know what happened. But you know what? R rather than um, putting more slander or more information, because we don't know what's true and what's not, um, I do think it's weird that this this uh, this next victim that came out, the situation that happened, I believe, 2001. Okay. Uh, Natalia, Natalia, I'm sorry if I messed up your name. Right. Um, she's come out and she's hired the the woman of all attorneys, uh, she actually is representing almost 11 victims. Um, from what an attorney is. Yeah. Oh, you the next Deshaun Watson, this shit finna pile up, watch. Yeah. It's finna pile uh, up, bro. You know, so I mean, it's, it's open season on Diddy, man. There ain't nothing that we can't, that we can tell you different that that's not public record. Yeah. Um, but I would say this. I would say that the, the details are in the music. <laughs> are in the lyrics, right? Okay. So remember when we talked about that whole Young Thug case and they were trying to subpoena his lyrics and right. use it against him? That trash tactic now. Right? Yeah. Um, but now, here it is. If you go through, if, if that ruling stands and is held up in the court of law, they can go to some of, some of his biggest they joints, use his music. some of his albums. I mean, just think about it. As a fan, if I if I if I'm doing... The Twitter investigation. If I'm doing 
the conspiracy theories, right? We can really look at some of the things that Biggie said, some of the things that Puff has said, some of the things that some of his artists have said, right? And use that as context to try to put some of these clues together. There, there's a lot out this here. This is nasty work it's her right nasty now. Nasty work. This is nasty work you know what I mean? right now, bro. And I don't, I don't, I don't have time to do the jigsaw puzzle. You know what I mean? At this point, I don't, I don't even care. I don't what, have time to cancel people, bro. No, you know what, I have no type of time. What I care about if, if is if you did this and you wronged these women and you were abusing them and drugging them, I'm not okay with that. It's yeah, fine. Right? No, kill yourself. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But beyond that. I'm not mad if, you know, you, you, you're a nasty motherfucker and you hey, want to get freaky. Knock yourself out. Fuck all that. Imagine if, okay, we're not canceling none of, none of the songs he was in. we just taking out all his ad-libs, all the bad boy songs, bro. Imagine how that shit is sound. Trash. <laughs> Trash, bro. Imagine all about the Benjamins without his hook on it. What y'all want to do? Want to be ballers, shot callers. Imagine that not being there, bro. Yeah, the, the, the other part is crazy to me, bro. Bad boy's no longer bad boy. This sounds not the sound. Well, no more though. That's some other wild ass shit I thought about for no reason. You know, what I'm yeah, fucking though. Yeah. All right. Well, then fuck. Let, let, let's have let's have a different conversation. The, absolutely overrated on how many remixes he killed. I only got four, four cold remixes, bro. Give me your four. Uh, only you. Only you. One twelve with Biggie. On, one twelve, Biggie. One more chance. Yep. Uh, fuck. Flavor in your ear. And special delivery, bro. I think, I think that's all I got. I don't. Their real love remix was average. The honey remix was average. Uh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. And that's another. I need a girl. Remix was on point. That's on my list as it well. Was, it was on point, bro. Uh, everything else, I'm cool on. Same beat. Same. Uh, my jo oh, the Jody's remix to uh, come and talk to me. I didn't like that remix. But I think Puffy had his touch on that too, though. But if you listen to this remix, bro, they all have the same kind of sound. A lot of them do. Yeah. Um, Trash. The honey with Mariah, I'm cool on, but it was I get it. Love Mariah though. Um, obviously, Bad Boy for Life with a uh, bust him MOP. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't even remember that shit though. Oh, the remix to uh, dun, 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 dun. oh, uh, uh, uh. oh they, they didn't need no Going remix. Nowhere, you know what I'm saying? They didn't need a remix, bro. You trash for remixing that shit. Um, obviously, you, did we say been, been around the world uh, remix with Mace? That's another one. You know what I'm saying? That makes like, five or six of me. Mace kill that. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, so he overrated on that on that note, bro. It's not. I'm not gonna give him overrated. I'm not gonna give him overrated because, like, okay, think about this: the genre and that time. He was he was low key dropping music quicker than the industry standard at that time. Well, you got now, people, yeah, you can do that right now. <laughs> right, this is what they do now. Like, boom, I drop on Monday. You got another joint on Wednesday, right? Okay, so. His budget was crazy. He was, he was the first one doing million dollar videos, right? Yes. Ma making them real productions. With trannies in them, um, and gender men and women in them. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about it, right? We ain't got to, the whole world saw it. They saw it, you know. And I, we're not shitting on it, you know, but it lends a lot of these. Look at man, fuck it. Let, let's go there, bro. Uh, these parties that they had, I've never been, I've never been invited. I'm nobody from nowhere. I'm anonymous to most of the world. Okay, cool. But, if you willingly go to a party knowing what goes on there, I'm not saying you fair game, but you making a choice to put yourself in a position where harm can come to you. Me, myself, personally, I'm not doing that. I'm not making that kind of choice to put myself in harm's way. And anybody I can save along the way, hey, man, don't do it. I'm going to do it. I had a conversation with somebody, and she told me, she said, hey, because you do it, don't mean everybody else can do it. I say, well, it sucks to be down. And she also said, well, you never know what position somebody's in in life to where they feel they have to make that decision to uh, be better. Nobody's a willing victim. I can't say that. I just described a willing victim. Nobody wants to be a victim by choice. But sometimes in life, situations force you to put yourself in compromised situations to do better for yourself or maybe further your career and things like that. And from hearing the stories and doing the internet research and, and digging and diving and being 45 years old and hearing this shit over the years and it piled up. And now, because the shorties only getting what's on the internet now. We pulled it from memory and old clips and old stuff we saw and knew the whole time. You know, for 20 plus years, 20 plus years, maybe more than that, maybe 30 years, bro, P. 
people have been making choices to go to these parties and and get done wrong and be victims. And that's why I think some people have an issue with you coming out now. You don't deserve to be sexually assaulted. You, you don't deserve not that. At all. Not, not saying ever. it at all. Not ever. Not, not abuse, doing that. Not verbally or physically. Uh, that verbally shit, I don't, I don't know. You can walk away. You can leave. You, you can get out of the situation. That, we we going to argue about that shit if it comes to that. You know, I, I disagree with people on that shit all the time. You know? But I forgot my point. Fuck you. So I'm old. And I don't care anymore. Come on, uh. People, you're fucking, man. People choose. Life is about choices. Life is about choices. If you choose door A, knowing the door A, door A can... uh be detrimental to you in the long run or down, down the road, that's on you. You choose door B, knowing that, hey, man, I'm not going to get to where I want to be in life or my career, but you leave it to morale and nothing to hide. There's no dirt in you, bro. More power to you, too. More power to both of them, bro. Well, uh, before we yeah, catch, catch this flight, no, I'm done with it. I'm you cool. Said, yeah, yeah, you go. I'm cool. Um, before we catch this flight, man, come on back to Chicago. We got your boy Towns getting up out of the Midwest. You go. Going going all the way back to New York. He I did believe he's from Jersey, so he's home. Um they gave up DiVincenzo. Somebody else and Julius Randle. And Julius Randle. Yep. It's just two. Two for one. Um, I, I like the trade. I like the trade, and I'm gonna tell you why. I I'm not a huge fan of Julius Julius Randle's game. I think he can he can hoop, he can play he's for sure. Bro. Um, but in that system, Wade Tibbs is running that system. There was no room for him with what they did last year. He's uh, he he becomes he takes up a lot of space, and he becomes ball dom dominant at times. With what they are running over there now, with Brunson, with Brunson, who needs to have the ball. Yeah, it doesn't work. It it doesn't work at all. They got Mikael Bridges now, and with Towns coming over, he he doesn't mind getting out. On a break, running, filling the lane. Right. Um, he, can, he, he, he can start a break. He shoots a lot of threes. threes. He's not your typical, your prototypical. They big lose man. some grit though, bro. They do. Because Randall was they a do. bruiser. They do. Um, so now I need to lean on the vet or two that that can bring that grit and that grind. I think I think New York won in this trade. I also believe that Randall is going to go to Minnesota and hate it. It's gonna hate it. Yeah, bro. I, I, I don't know. I got stranger things have happened, bro. Stranger things have happened, but you got you got a budding superstar there, an Ant Man. It's his team, and let's not forget, Randall was an All Star. Yeah, so Randall's not really a, a dope three point shooter. I I don't really understand his mid range as far as well. I don't. I'm not sure about his mid range game, but you also got Gobert down the lane, bro. If you gonna play bully ball down low, you gotta have Gobert get out the way, and he's not doing that. Do you feel well? Who do you feel? Who do you feel won in this trade? I gotta wait and see. I gotta wait and see. I, I would say New York, though. I would say New York because it's not really he. Carl Anthony Towns as he, as uh as prolific as a scorer as he is, he can do it all as a big man. The first big to actually win three point shootout. I don't think he changed the dynamic of how they play. And that's my point. Yeah, Randall changes they there. If Randall stays, it changes the dy dynamic. Bringing Towns in. You keep a big man, maybe not as aggressive and or as physical, but it does not change the style of basketball that we are playing and the culture that we're building. Right. Randall can Randall might might have won. He can go. He can now go and be as free as he wants to be with him and Anthony Edwards. Who said Minnesota gonna keep him? Eh. You see what I'm saying? Eh. Who said they gonna keep him, bro? Who said New York gonna keep Carl Anthony Towns? Curl. Curl Anthony Towns, bro. Nah, he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> okay. He ain't going nowhere. Where you gonna go? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know, dog. But New York probably should try to keep him. I don't. I, if Minnesota can get a legit four, not saying Jr. Julius Randle ain't legit, but they can get a legit four that maybe can maybe got an eighteen footer. That will help. That will help a lot. All right. Well, you know, time time will tell. Um, again, New York. I'm out, man. Um, not coming back for a while until y'all get a mayor. Um, also, the shit, you know, right before the, the mayor got indicted, the uh, the chief of police he 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 got indicted two weeks <laughs> they before. Going down. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all nasty. It's nasty work, man. Y'all <laughs> do better. Y'all locking niggas up for gun charges. You know what I'm saying? And weed for for life and sending niggas to Attica. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, it's trash in New York, man. So anytime we out in New York, um, I'm not coming outside. I'm, I'm going to go out there, do what we got to do, and I'm coming right back. Or I'm in the hotel. Or I'm, <laughs> hey, man. Or, or, right. or, or, or I'm at Soho. I'm at Soho. Shout out to Soho. You love Soho now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Soho, man. I'm a Soho whore. There you go. <laughs> All right, man, we out. This is episode, what we say, 218. It's, it's been a real one, man. We're about to go to PodFest. Uh, shout out to Fax and Law. Law. Yep. For putting this together. A uh, lot of lot of dope podcasts that will be there. A lot of dope energy, man. Uh, people that's really, really doing this for real in Chicago and taking right. the space very seriously. Uh, so we're going to go over there, man, show some love. Do a panel, you know what I mean? So thank y'all for the invite for real. It means Absolutely. a lot. And I don't know. I guess we're gonna turn about to that. Or during. Or I after. Gotta go to work. Work ain't shit with a job. We out. <laughs> Hello. Shout out to Brandy. 